while today is the first day out on the water with the brand new Hobie Lynx and this starts a whole new chapter on minimalistic kayak fishing. Minimal weight, minimal effort and minimal gear to get out on the water and get stuck into a few good fish and I'm really excited because this is going to open a whole range of new systems that we can go and fish being able to car top this and just being able to launch with absolute ease so I'm really excited about that we've got some very flat conditions but be warned there is a massive rain band which is about half an hour away from us so we're pretty keen to get on the water and hopefully get stuck into a few fish on the Hobie Lynx before that weather changes anyway guys sit back and enjoy the show Okay, so this is the brand new Hobie Lynx. The absolute draw card about this kayak is it weighs just over 20 kilos, making it one of the lightest kayaks in the class of kayaks on the market today. Very, very sleek, very, very stylish. Essentially what it does look like and feel like is a stand-up paddle board with a chair and obviously with your 180 Mirage drive. So I've pinched the turbo fins from my Pro Angle. I'm gonna be using those today to get a little bit more speed on the water. I've fitted a couple of extra things, so I've put the H-rails on there. I think that is an absolute necessary item. Gives me a chance to put rod holders. I've pinched the Hobie H-crate from my Pro Angler. Again, I think if you're going to have one of these, that is an absolute must-have item because I don't know how you would store your rods and net and everything. I can chuck this on the roof of the car and I can set up this kayak in literally five minutes and have it ready on the water to launch. The other thing I've done is I've just fitted some of these Burley Pro Side Bros. That gives me some needed storage. And that's what awaits us today. Breathtaking conditions and hopefully we can catch a few cracking fish out on the Hobie Lynx. All right, so let's do a bit of a speed test. So we should be able to just absolutely fly on this thing. Oh yeah, this is fast, especially with those 180 fins in there. That's really good. And the turning on this, let's, let's turn it full lock and look at that, the turning is insane. You can pretty much do a 360 on the spot. Now I've owned the Pro Angler 14 for many, many years and that thing's a bit like a submarine on the water, but that is incredible turning. What I've done is I've just mounted on the hay trail there just a rod holder now for me that's just convenience there so if i need to retie a leader or if i catch a fish and i want to just put my rod in there that's all that that one is and obviously we have storage here so i've got all my jig heads all my lures all my soft plastics and everything there i've got everything directly behind me i've got my two rods i can access i've got a dry bag for all my personal belongings i've got the net there ready to go and i've got heavy duty jackets all right, so I've got no sounder on this kayak, so this is all gonna be part of this minimalistic approach. I don't wanna rock up to a spot, add extra weight, have to sit there and plug things in. That at some point, I probably might be tempted to put a smaller sounder on here. But for the time being, I'm really loving this minimalistic approach. There is absolutely nothing in my way here. And there's something really special about being on the water, nice and early, calm conditions. You're really low and flat to the water on a platform like this. The only thing that's missing now is a couple of good fish. So let's go and get those before the rain comes through. But as I said, every day is different, mate. We'll, oh, oh, getting a bite. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Big fish. Oh, big fish, big fish, big fish, big fish. Look at it swim, it's going crazy. Is it swimming towards me? Please don't say, please, I hope it didn't come off. No, it didn't come off. Man, this thing's swimming like crazy. Man, this is huge. Pulling the whole yak, mate. Yeah. <sighs> 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 if 
far out. This is going to be huge. Can't budget. Oh, really? The hell is doing circles? Big head shakes. I wasn't prepared for this. Come on, come up. No, if it's a floody, it's a three meter floody, I tell ya. Oh, he's on the move again, he's on the move again. Oh, it's huge. It's massive, it's huge. Oh my God, this thing is huge. It's right here, it's right here. Come back, come back, come back, come back, come back. Oh, no. Oh no, he's right there, it's, it's massive man. A PB on the links, come on, this will be a way to break in a kayak, a way to break in a oh no, I had him in. Nah, I'm gonna land it, I'm gonna land it. Yes! Oh. The Lynx is broken in, baby. Holy cow. I'm just taking a minute here just to take it in and enjoy it because that was so good. I was convinced I was going to lose that fish. Look at the size oh, of this thing. Yeah. Let's get a good look at this fish. Now, so you've got to be real careful on the links because they're slippery fish. And um, if you drop it, they're gone. Have a look at that. That is a big Barwon River Silver Trevally on the Hobie links. And I've always got this bit of a weird thing about the first fish that you catch on a new rod or the first fish that you catch on a new platform. And I'll tell you what, if this is a sign of things to come for the Hobie Lynx, then we are in for a good thing because that, that is an absolute cracker. I actually thought that this fish was gonna beat us. I was really, really worried there. And just for a little bit there, it just sat on the bottom. And I thought, oh, I hope it's not a ray, just because the pure weight, but the power on these Silver Trevally are next level. And I'll tell you what, I'm so happy with that catch. That is a magnificent fish. And there you go. It does not get any better than that. Wow, wow, wow. I tell you what, you just... Look, we put in the hard yards, yeah? We travel to a lot of places. We put a lot of hours on the water. You just dream of those moments. You know, we're fishing peak low tide. That water clarity is absolutely horrible. So we're sort of um and ahhing how far up river we need to go. And then all of a sudden that rod just started screaming. And I think the biggest thing that you've got to do in those situations, it's hard not to do it. I do it myself and I've caught thousands of fish, but the key thing is not to panic. You've really got to trust your gear. And even at those moments where the fish was holding the bottom and I was just sort of like, oh, you're tempted to really tighten that drag and muscle it up. What you are going to do is you're just going to put more strain on your knots. And if you're going to compromise anything, it's going to be those leaders and those knots. And you've just got to just take your time, not panic. Trust that you're doing everything right. Trust the gear that you've got. 
take your time, a couple of deep breaths, and hopefully land some cracking fish like that. And I'll tell you what, it's happy days when you do. So Hobie Lynx might be my new good luck charm. So today is the peak full moon. And often when it's full moon, you're gonna find there's very, very little water movement. And you'll often hear the term no flow, no go. So it means that the fishing can be a little bit tough. And that's the reason why today we're out in the river and not out in the bay, because we do find some of our local species do go off the bite, I find for about 48 hours. Now it's very, very calm out here, but what we are hoping is as we start to move through that tide, that that water flow will pick up because what we want is we want an influx of that clean water. Um, even though that water clarity is not great, Clearly there's some good fish in here, so sometimes a case of sticking it out. You almost need to fish. <clears throat> Be good if we get line the kite. Oh, oh, yep, yep. I was just yapping my way. I've got to watch this pole now. Oh, it's a good fish too, man. Shh, no, it is. All right, I'm gonna move because I'm gonna end up right on that pole. Oh. <laughs> the power on these things is mental, man. Oh. He's gonna go straight for that pole. Ah, oh, it's exactly where he's going. Got him away from it. <sighs> Can see leader already, so he should come up in a sec. He's not as big as the other one, I don't think, so. Oh, he's a solid fish, I can see. <sighs> Whew. Here we go, fun on the links. Number two, this is Big Trevally number two. He's not as big as the other one, but he's a very, very solid fish. He's a very solid fish. <laughs> and he's not done. Come this way, mate. No, you're not done. All right. Trevally just seemed to find another gear all the time, especially when there's any structure around. Oh. And every time I got to pull my net out, he just goes for one last run. He's like, no, I'm not done. Let's just keep that there. Oh. Come on, this way. Come this way. Come on, we should get you now. There we go, gotcha. <laughs> He's another solid one, man. He is another solid fish. Hell yeah. Woo. Definitely not as big as the last one. The last one was a beast, but this is a very, very solid fish. The rain's starting to settle in now, which is expected. So we've only been on the water for half an hour. And I said before that the rain was probably about an hour away and right on cue it's here now. But there you go, there is another beautiful silver trevally so this one clearly isn't as big as the other one and we can see that this fish here has definitely had a run in with a nice predator species in here you know you do really wonder what has had a go at that because something has taken a nice big chomp out of the tail of that fish but there you go that is a beautiful silver trevally this one here is probably just pushing 40 centimeters i'd say probably 41 42 but gee they fight hard that weather is about to settle in because i reckon it's dropped about three or four degrees in the last minute and we've got some mighty, mighty dark clouds on the horizon. But there you go. That is another beautiful silver trevally on the Hobie Lynx. Right, well, that's not a bad half an hour on the water so far. So we've got a 60 centimetre trevally and a 42 centimetre trevally. And I'll tell you what, it is so much fun. One of the things you notice about these kayaks is because they're so light on the water, the fish actually pull you and drag you around. So I know when I'm fishing usually in my Hobie Pro Angler 14, you're sort of in the control seat, you're sitting back, you're kind of dictating terms. Where with these Trevally today, every time I've caught one, they've dragged me around. You're having to do a lot of adjustments to the line and your rod positioning and your drag setting and all that sort of stuff just to stay in control of the fish. So all we're using is just two and a half inch grubs on a 1 12th of an ounce jig head, one slash O, so very small size and working them painfully slowly today. All right, let's see how this thing handles waves, eh? There we go. Yeah, no problems. No problems. There we go, a bit of water come over. Cool. Now the stability on these kayaks are surprisingly so, so good. Now obviously you want to pick your conditions where you're fishing. So obviously it's really meant for fishing in your estuary systems, your shallow flats, your lakes, and your inshore waters, but obviously 
with any of that style of fishing, you have to be mindful of your conditions. So you're not going to go out in inshore waters and half meter swells because this is not designed for it. And obviously that hull shape, you can see straight away, it's very, very flat. If you've got any swell, and obviously waves are going to come over the top and you are going to take on a bit of water. What is good about these kayaks though, is that they self drain really, really quickly. That's pretty typical of a lot of the Hobies. So even the pro anglers and the outbacks, get a little bit of water comes on and they just self drain out straight away where that Mirage drive plugs in. So very, very smart in that sense. They do provide extreme convenience, really good performance on the water, great stability, but it is a very, very steep price point. They cost about four, four and a half, five thousand dollars $5,000. And um, I can't help but think if they had a price this a little bit under the compass, then we would see a lot of these out on the water. It's a real shame because I really rate it. Other than the cost in the right conditions, these kayaks absolutely excel. All right, fishing with me today is good mate Chris, who has finally cracked the Trevally. Had to sit and watch me catch a few, so now it's his time, which is good. <laughs> oh, good fish. Come up and get a nice close look. Oh, no! Oh, well done, matey. <laughs> well done. Well done. Got there. Beautiful, mate. Well done. Awesome. All right, that rain is really settling in now, so I've just got the nice... Uh, warmer jacket on because it is freezing so at the moment it's probably about eight degrees that temperature has just completely plummeted it is still comfortable out here even though it's raining and then it's drizzling rod and reel on hand jacket on let's go catch another silver trevally now you can hear that noise that you get when the front of the hull hits any waves and they call that hull slapping and that is more noticeable on this kayak than probably any other kayak that i've ever used if you're fishing in an area where there's lots of swell and those waves are just belting along the front, you're just going to hear this constant tapping sound, which does get annoying. But again, where we are today, it's pretty calm, so it's not an issue. Oh man, it's cold. Oh, it's cold. Oh, 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 come on. Gotcha. Yep, here we go. Yep, yep, that's another good fish. Whew, cold or not cold, the fish don't care, neither do I. So what a morning this has been. Ah. You know, winter fishing is not just about putting the boat and the kayak away. Yeah, it's cold, but there's some good fish here. Ooh. Oh, come back, come back. Or is it a tailor? So a beautiful tailor, just taking that grub again in his mouth. So I should be able to flip him around without dropping him. And there you go there, there's the grub in his mouth. So what an awesome fish. We caught lots of these up in East Gippsland. So obviously very prevalent in those sort of estuaries up there. Love catching these fish and obviously you gotta watch the chompers there on O'Brien because they do have very, very sharp teeth. So we'll get that plastic out of his mouth. There we go. Raining, it's cold. And uh, you know, it don't matter because we're catching plenty of good fish. Oh, look at the big splashes. You got your net behind you, directly behind you. Another Trevally. Well done, matey. That one fought a bit harder, I reckon, than your other one. It did that initial run it's like little nibble 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 and then bang they take off beautiful another silver trevally and that rain has stopped for about one second nice mate all right so now we're just going to stand and fish for a little bit <laughs> oh here we go come on come on there's a big Gotcha, I called it. Standing up and fishing is the best on these things. Look at that circling action. <laughs> oh, 
and we might have to sit down here in a second it's amazing how clear the water clarity is now you can see these fish just swimming around and circling and it, you can actually appreciate what they do when you've got them on so this fish is just circling on his side he does not want to come up and for what was a very subtle take this is quite a nice fish yeah this is a really nice one. Oh yeah <laughs> all right so we might sit down here so we'll get the net that was a lot of fun standing up that water clarity is so clear we should be able to pull this i think it's another nice one it's coming up now oh this might be another tailor oh this is another tailor but it's a huge one oh <laughs> It's another tailor, but it is bigger than the last one. And that was awesome because we were standing up in the yak then, and as soon as it hit the soft plastic, that water clarity is just so clear now. It's amazing that an hour ago, the water was just a thick brown. There was weed everywhere. It looked like nothing would inhabit these waters. And an hour later, tide change, water flows, flushes through the system. It is crystal clear and you can see fish everywhere. And this is a ripping tailor, so I'm just gonna put that in free spool there. So tailor have that, oh, far out. <laughs> Did you see that? I dropped it and then grabbed it by hand. One of the fun things about the lynx is if you drop a fish overboard, it's gone and that one stayed on the line. But one of the things about a tailor is they're very, very streamlined. They've got a body very, very much like an Australian salmon. And obviously Australian salmon are a hard and fast fighting fish. And these guys are very, very similar. Obviously some characteristic difference, slightly different color. They've got those nice sharp teeth, but that is another cracking fish in the Barwon River. We're having lots of fun now. And as you can see, these guys equally like soft plastic. So we're gonna get that soft plastic out of his mouth and get him on his way. There's no excuses on a platform like this. Like you can have a heap of tackle and gear and that out with you and obviously in terms of a fishing platform she's nice and stable you can almost sight cast bay trout and big silver flashes everywhere this is really really awesome stuff all right so we'll just cover all the gear that we're using today because we do get a lot of questions about this stuff from viewers so obviously today fishing on a brand new hobie lynx the rod that i'm using is a poison adrena from shimano it is a 267 ml six foot seven in length two to four kilo i've got a shimano stella fk 2500 spin reel that is spooled with 14 pound ghost and braid and i've got one rod length of eight pound fluorocarbon leader what we're using on the end of that is a 112th jig head in a size 10 and you can see there we have got the z-man st grub in the blood oil color the guy i'm fishing with today he's got a shimano raider rod and a shimano sienna combo and that is equally as good as catching good fish out here we're not endorsing these products this is just what we use and obviously we're only going to talk about stuff that we go out and buy ourselves well what an awesome morning that ended up being yes we've battled some drizzly and rainy conditions and it's been mighty cold out here but what better way to break in a brand new kayak and some brand new fishing gear and kicking off the day after five minutes tangling with that 60 centimeter trevally and obviously the day continued to get better from there we caught quite a few trevally we've got quite a few taylor the hobie lynx and the gear really stood up today so really really thrilled and as i said i think this is really going to open up a whole world of possibility in terms of that minimalistic fishing approach that rain's about to kick into full gear and as i said we are expecting a torrential downpour very very shortly so we're going to get off the water we're going to call it a day thank you for your company hope you've enjoyed the episode i look forward to seeing you out on the water sometime soon take care everyone If you enjoyed the episode, then become a Fishing Mad member. It's easy to join by visiting www.fishingmad.com.au forward slash member and gain access to an online portal that's full of helpful fishing content, including detailed workshops, fishing reports, rigging tutorials, podcasts, giveaways, competitions, maps, gear reviews, sounder training, exclusive videos, and much more. It's a great platform and helps to support everything we do at Fishing Mad, so become a member today.